in front of the shopping, little shopping centre drive. And they're all got their hands up, I think, what, what's going on? And then suddenly, four or five more motorbikes come screaming, all with their siren, and they go flying around the corner. Then a police car, and we're just going, hello, someone important <coughs> is coming. And there was a Range Rover, and, so, and we're going, who's in there? <laughs> and we go, Who, who's in there? You know, you know, you know. And then there was a big black van and another police car, and then all the motorbikes shot up up to the roundabout. <laughs> so Jesus, how can I say it like this? Let me rephrase it. Today, I think that was Andrew, who was it? Prince Andrew, yes. And um, he was going somewhere to pizza or something. Um, we would expect a king to come in like in a stretch limo, police, you know what I mean? That, that whole paparazzi, all that sort of stuff. But compared to Jesus, when we see what he did, it's like him coming on a moped. He came on a donkey. You understand? This 533-year-old prophetic event happened in Luke 19:31, and Jesus tells his disciples, "If anyone asks you why are you untying the donkey or the moped, say the Lord needs it." So, how can you be faithful as a servant? Now, listen in. You can offer someone a ride. Such a simple thing, isn't it? You can offer someone a ride. Now, we don't know this businessman who owned a donkey. We don't know if he had 10 donkeys or 50 donkeys or 100 donkeys. We don't know if he was the donkey king of Jerusalem. Okay? <laughs> we don't know if he tried to negotiate. I don't think he says, this, this donkey and goes to church. Brand new condition. Okay, he's in good shape. We don't know any of that sort of stuff. We don't know if that happened at all. But what we do know, he says, if the Lord wants it, he can use it, he can have it. In other words, making a resource available, he was serving God. You understand what I'm saying? So sometimes it's making your resources available to bless other people. You understand what I'm saying this morning? Such a simple way to serve God. Okay? And if the Lord needs it, he can use it. So how can I make it different as a servant? I can bring a lunch. Okay? I can share. Okay. I can do something insignificant that no one sees. Number two. I could also uh, offer a ride or use my, um, my stuff, my house, my caravan, my car, my resources, my moped, okay, whatever it is, I can use it for the glory of God. And number three, carry a towel. Everyone say, carry a towel. I think this is the most powerful picture from the New Testament. The setting is just, the, just before the Passover. It's Thursday night. We're in Jerusalem, and there's a secret meeting going on in an upper room. And uh, Jesus is there, the disciples are there, and they are sharing some bread together, and they are sharing some wine together. Uh, this is what we celebrate. Once a month we celebrate communion. We, we do what they were doing in this upper room. And they were there doing that. And Jesus is in this room and Jesus knew he was about to die. His focus was on the next few hours of what's to occur. He would be crucified. He was very aware, the human part of him was very aware of the pain and the suffering he was about to go to. He, he was wanting to obey the Father. And in Luke chapter 22, the meal... I don't know if you've read this, but the meal was about to end. And he says, someone's about to betray me. And all the disciples are going, who? Who, who are going to betray me? He says, there's one person in this room who's about to betray me. And while that's occurring, and the person who betrays him gets up and leaves, at the same time, one of the other Gospels tells us, that an argument is starting just after communion, just that, that after they've had a really nice time of felt that this argument starts. And do you know what the argument's about? Who's the greatest? <laughs> the disciples are having an argument. And John says, He leans on my shoulder, on my chest, I'm the greatest. 
And then maybe, maybe Peter says, hey, John, you sat in the boat. I got out of the boat. I walked on water. And John said, yeah, but you only took two steps and you drowned. Okay. <laughs> and then Bartholomew says, well, I'm the greatest. And they go, who are you? Are you one of our disciples? <laughs> Get lost. There's this argument, selfish, self-suited, self-promoting, I'm the greatest. They're being goats. After Jesus is sitting there and he's contemplating his future, the cross, and here are the disciples talking about who's the greatest. Jesus looks around, he sees them arguing, he looks at their feet, sees that they're dirty and that no one offered to wash them. And what does Jesus do? He watches Judas leave. <coughs> Jesus knew he came to be a servant and to serve. What does he do? John 13, 4 to 5. Jesus got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. This is a scandalous act of selfless service. You know, and everybody reacts. They're just having an argument of who's the greatest. And everyone starts to react of what Jesus is doing, right? And you know, like it, it, common, courtesy, common courtesy would be like today. If you if you came to our house, common courtesy would be, "Hello, welcome. Can I take your coat? Hang up your coat. Okay. Can can I offer you something to drink? You know." But what Jesus does, he does that. Can I take your coat? Can I offer you a drink? Can I give you a pedicure? Okay. Okay. It's kind of what? What are you doing? Okay. And that's what he does. You know. And I don't know about you, but he was washing feet. I, I've been to the Robina Town Centre. And there are shops that specialise in this. There's a whole group of women that go there regularly. I don't know about you, but I don't see that as a career path. I'm not, uh, maybe you're involved in that, but you know, like, whew, you know, and they scrub away at the feet and everything. And I walk past, so I just go, there's got to be a better job than that. How many blokes have gone in and got that done? See what I mean? Oh, that looks good on you. Okay. <laughs> so their culture, when a guest arrived, you would ask your slave who lived in your house and you looked after, you would get them to come and wash their feet. Jesus turns that on his head, turns that on its head, and he says, I'm a servant. He takes off his clothes, he's in his underpants if they had them at that time, and he wraps a towel around and he starts to wash people's feet. Okay. Self-centred, self-promoting disciples, and here he is washing their feet. What a lesson. <laughs> what a lesson. <laughs> Grabs a towel. Smelly, stinky, ingrown toenails. Dirt under the toenails. Yeah walking through donkey poo and he starts to wash their feet. The Jesus, Son of God, living water, Lamb of God, the true wine, the bread of life, the light of the world, the living stone, the King of glory, the Prince of peace, the great high priest, the righteous judge, the chosen one, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Elf and Omega Arizim is on the ground serving, washing dirty, smelly feet of blokes who were self-promoting. Yeah. Oh, have we got to do what Jesus does? Yeah. Jesus was a servant who came to serve, to give his life. And he says, if you want to be great, musicians, in this place, if you want to be great, don't self-promote. Bring a lunch, Number one, offer a ride and carry a towel. So when you serve someone else, you're actually serving Jesus. 
So that worked this week. And I guarantee there'll be people at work, at uni, at school who who sit in who, who sit in places to be promoted, to be seen. You, you, you know all that dynamic and and we're called to serve. Each and every one of us. And we've got to learn to die to ourselves. Do you know do you know what that means to die to yourself? That means there's got to be a bit of blood on the floor. Let me say that again. To die to yourself. There's got to be a little bit of blood on the floor. You know, later on, Peter, Peter was caught out being a little bit racial. He was sitting with his Jewish mates instead of sitting with the Gentile believers. And Paul made a call on it, on his selfish decision. So even in the scriptures, we're told time and time again, we've got to become servants. Change our attitude and become a servant. If you're struggling with this message, you've got to name it. Whatever that behaviour is, if you can name it, you can tame it. Okay? Or else, can I just say it this way, it'll rule your life. And you're going to be number one along with everyone else in the world. <laughs> Which we're not called to do. We're all called to be servants. Little things are big things in the kingdom of God. Little things that we do. We've got many teams here that carry towels. Many, many teams. And um, this morning, when I walked in, uh, James, he was uh, arranging the seats and he lines them up. He, he lines up the seats perfectly. He, he does that and I come along and kick them. And he goes, <laughs> just to tease him, just have fun. But he does it. He, every Sunday he does that. He's serving God. Yeah. We had a guy... Mark, and he's on holidays at the moment, but he would come into our training program. We're training people to get jobs. And Mark would come in and volunteer and help people after the training and explain things who were people who had a second language, of uh, not, not, not being English, English was a second language. And he would help them out. That's Mark. He would come in and just volunteer. He served God, you know? And, and Wayne, over here, on, on, you know, he, he could be at Movie World at the moment. He's famous. He was, he was involved in the Seven Guardians of the Fifteen Tombs movie. <laughs> but every Sunday, and uh, every Sunday we see him pushing dials and sending us all deaf. Um, but Wayne does a great job. Karen and Bolo and all the guys, and Paul on, on, on put the words up, you know, because every time they make a mistake, we go, oh, 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 won't try to sing, but they do a great job. They serve us every Sunday. As I said, King George is there cooking sausages. And you know, on a Monday, on a Monday, he comes and counts the physical cash that you give on a Sunday, and he takes it to the bank. So there you go. If you want to rob him, you know what happens. <laughs> And met in Maryland on a Friday night across the road and it cost us 120 bucks to hire that place every Friday night because kids go ballistic. If we had them in here, we'd have holes in the walls. And, but every Friday night, they're serving your kids. And we've got girls upstairs who are translating, and I was kicking the TV this morning because it wasn't working, but translating every Sunday upstairs and they're not in church. Hello, Helen. See? <laughs> Simone is out with the kids and she's been planning and working every Sunday. She's a volunteer and Jaden's out there running Zeal out there and is doing an amazing job. And, and uh, Sarah and Trina, they, they, they're in there on the Sundays and they prepare communion for us. You know, like, you yeah, know, this but they do it, you know, every, every Sunday. And Robbie is running our new believers class in there. You know... We have in this church a retired pensioner who bought us a brand new server. I'm not going to say it because that person would be embarrassed. That's a lot of money. We've got toddlers upstairs and Maureen and her team every week up there. If you put me up there... <laughs> but she, she loves those kids, you know. We've got connect group leads. We've got hosts. We've got our Bethany staff that work. And I know they get paid and everything, but they love caring and looking after 
all of our families that come to us in Bethany 24-7. And we have David, um, he comes in very early and sets up stuff. He does RE every week and we ning and ding though. Ning's here and, and what, I, what I'm telling you is Ning here, you know, like, you know, not only does she run a connect group, but her and her husband, you know, they, 